Welcome, guys. My name is Cindy Williams. I am your host. This is Bliss to Abundance. If this is your first time joining the live stream, first of all, welcome. Um, I started back in the travel industry. It's my 25-year anniversary this year. I cannot even believe that. Um, but yeah, I started when I was 19, right out of high school, I went to travel school, and it has been quite a journey. So if it's your first live stream, welcome. I always say my purpose in life is to help people follow their bliss into abundance. Most of the way that I do that is uh, helping people grow amazing travel businesses to six figures and beyond. But this live stream is uh, a way that we can connect and give you guys some advice and tips, and we have such a cool topic today. So. First of all, if you guys are joining us, um, if you're watching on uh, Roku and Amazon, hello, the show is streaming over there, and we're also streaming on YouTube and Facebook, so drop us a comment. We can see as the comments come in, um, oh, I have already have a bunch of good mornings, so hello, Tina, Stacy, Stephanie, welcome, welcome, welcome. Stephanie says, welcome back. If you guys miss me, I've been gone. We were in um, Florida for, for just over 30 days. We went on a very extended uh, trip part of what we do we we're doing some filming for the show but we we're also getting our content we sell destinations all over the world at my travel agency and uh, we did a ton of content creation and a ton of content for this channel to help you guys grow your travel businesses too so we've only put out a tiny fraction over on YouTube if you're not already following us over there you can find us on the Cindy Williams uh, is the name of our channel over there and uh, we do videos on how to grow your agency and we do the live streams too but we did so much great content and i can't wait it's just in editing we have so much in the in the queue for editing so i'm so excited to share that fun good stuff with you guys in the future so stay tuned for that over on youtube but today i wanted to um talk about marketing and the top three mistakes that travel businesses make that will absolutely devastate your lead flow and if you're running a business of any kind, lead flow is kind of the lifeblood of your business. If you don't have leads, you don't have a business. And a lot of, especially new travel companies, or even if you've been in business for, you know, 15 years, the game has changed on how you get leads into your business. So when they start to slow down, that should be a huge red flag for you. And when they, if, if they're just trickling in, it's really hard to get the abundance that you need to, to run your travel business full time or to have that full scale travel business that most people want, right? So we're going into fall and I thought, what a better time to talk about lead flow and marketing than the fall. Because what you guys do right now in the fall is going to set you up for success in busy season. Busy season, if you're brand new in our industry, is the first quarter of the year, January, February, March. But how you are marketing in fourth quarter will determine the level of business you do in first quarter. If you wait till January and start doing your marketing, you might have a little success, but not the same success as if you have an actual strategy behind your marketing. So at any rate, perfect timing. And it's so funny, um, on top of just coming back from Florida like a week ago, and then we're moving. We, we built uh, a home here in Austin. We're moving in a week. And I always share a coffee mug because I love three things. I love crazy earrings. I love coffee mugs and I love travel. And I always share a coffee mug with you guys. But today I have the, a funny little kitty cat because it's the only coffee mug left right now. We're a little behind on dishes and we're packing things up. And so, but I figured we're talking about fall. I know we're not ready to talk about Halloween yet and all that fun stuff, but that's our coffee mug today. And we're going to go ahead and go with that one. So tell me you guys' favorite coffee mug. Drop me, drop me a little note below. And I bought seriously so many coffee mugs in Florida. So I'm going to have so many great ones uh, to show you once we get unpacked in the new house. But let's jump in. Let's dive in and talk about marketing. So first of all, the number one uh, mistake that I see clients make when it comes to marketing is that their branding and their messaging is just too generic. It lacks an identity. And when you, what most new business owners, whether it's travel or any other business, is they, they go out and they start thinking, like, how do I get the most clients? How do I appeal to everybody? And when you try to appeal to everybody, it's actually a recipe for disaster because you end up trying to appeal to everybody and your brand is generic and then it appeals to nobody. 
So that's one of those challenges where you, you try to go after a big prize, but what ends up happening is you don't have an identity. People don't remember your brand or, or it just kind of, it kind of goes to the, the space of everything that they're seeing, right? We, have, we see thousands of ads on a daily basis when you go through life. You go to Target, you, you know, see all the marketing of the brands. You're driving down the street, you see all the, the stuff. What we're talking about is um, the, having a generic brand or what you think is going to appeal to the masses ends up not appealing to very many people and that can really hurt your lead flow. So does your company have an identity? Are you clear on your messaging? Are, is there a through line from all the places that your company is set up and all your architecture? Do you, it, it, can people recognize your brand from YouTube to Facebook to the emails that you send out? Is there a clear brand identity? So that's the first one that, that I would say. Um, the second one is a lot of times branding, messaging, or even the promotions that you're putting on your page, what can happen is you're attracting the wrong clients. And this is the, another number one thing I hear all the time is how do I get rid of tire kickers in my business, right? The people who are wasting your time, the people that are not serious, the people that don't have big enough budgets to buy the things that you want to sell. So um, attracting the wrong clients is a big deal. If your marketing is not on point, if your marketing does not say what you want it to say, you're going to start getting the wrong people, right? Um, and I want you to think about this. If you're, let's say you're a luxury brand, you're a high-end travel agency. I mean, would you rather sell 100 trips a year or do you want to sell 400 trips a year, right? Do the math. So if you're selling river cruises and you're selling guided tours and you're selling high-end all-inclusives or high-end Disney, if you're doing those things, you can sell a whole lot less vacations than if you're doing 8 million carnival cruises for $4.99. Like it's just a math equation, right? So of course you want the clients that are buying the stuff over here. So your marketing needs to say that. So the right marketing should offend the wrong people and attract the right people. And we're not going to get into a conversation about fees and you know, those are things that will offend the wrong type of people though. Like there's, we have other videos about <laughs> fees and that kind of stuff, but that is part of the process of getting rid of tire kickers, right? But you, it starts with your marketing. What does your marketing say? What do people feel? I, I saw a really brilliant campaign from another agency here in um, Austin and I thought they get it. I bet they're doing a lot of business. When you go to their site, it said something along the lines of now accepting clients with budgets of $10,000 or more. And you might say, oh my gosh, I can never put that out there. Well, what does that say to the wrong client, right? It says, oh, I don't have $10,000. I'm not going to go do, you know, the, I might, they might be offended. Like, how dare they, right? But what does it say to the client who has a twenty, thirty, dollars or $40,000 budget? It says, oh, those people value their time. They must be experienced to only be accepting clients with big budgets. That's who I want to work with. You can't you have to get out of your mindset or your pocketbook and think from the mindset of the client that you want to sell to, right? That is a brilliant approach. And maybe, maybe it's not 10,000, maybe it's a different number or whatever the case is if you're starting out. But the point is that that company was drawing a, a line in the sand to say, hey, here's who I am open to working with, right? And that can, cha that can change the game. So from the way that your marketing looks, from your messaging, to how you interact with clients and what that client experience is can all affect screening out those tire kickers and bringing the right people in. So that's the number two um, thing. Now, the third thing is that um, mar your marketing might lack good messaging or branding. And it's kind of similar to the, the first one that we talked about, right? But it really, I really want to kind of drive that point home. If authenticity is the new sales. And when I say it lacks good messaging, let me like elaborate on that. If you are trying to say, oh, I'm luxury, so I'm gonna put pictures of yachts and things, and, but if you don't do yacht tours, like does that make sense? The other thing is, who are you? Who are you? Like, does your company represent you? Because at the end of the day, they're gonna get to work with you. So you need to talk about what's special about you what's authentic about you and how is a, what is a way that you can weave who you are into the lifeblood of your company. 
Because if you can get that off, then you don't need to attract every client in the world, right? Travel is a trillion dollar industry. You need a couple hundred clients to book trips with you this year. But the right clients, the people who are going to gel with you, the people who are going to connect with you, the, the rule of sales, and sales is a whole other <laughs> topic too, but the rule of sales is if people buy from people that they feel like they know or like, right? So you're, you don't have to connect with everybody. So having a, a clear vision for your brand and how you weave in who you are, what, what authentically you're about, like, why did you get into travel? Why are you doing this? How is that weaved into the story of your company? And I know this is a tough concept if you're new to marketing and it really is an art. It's, this is one of the things we work really hard on uh, with our clients who are in our 12 week mastermind is understanding how do you reach those clients, but how do you represent yourself in a way that is authentic? And how do you build company messaging and branding around who you are at, at the core? Because if you can get that part right and then marry it with the right marketing, then you're all of a sudden you're attracting people that, that want to work with you. They're signing up to work with you, right? So that, that's the other, the other item. And think about that. Like go back to your marketing today and go, does this say me? Does this connect with, with who I am? I love it. Oh, I've seen all these notes in here. You guys are so funny. You did, but you're back. Okay, good. Thank you, Tina, for letting me know. Like it froze for a second in the middle. I've never had that happen before, but it's live TV. What are you going to do? So I appreciate you guys for hanging in there and keep, uh, to keep viewing. So I want you guys to think about this marketing, these three mistakes, these three devastating things that will just cut your lead flow, like immediately before you even get out of the gate. So growing a travel business is sim at its simplest form is a simple math equation. If you, uh, assuming you are halfway decent at sales, you're closing at least three out of 10, you have at least a 30% close rate. If you're doing that, usually the only problem we have to fix is your lead flow, right? So from that perspective, I want you to think about, is your marketing delivering leads? Every day when you open up your computer, do you have leads on your schedule? Do you have leads coming in on a regular basis consistently? That is what gets you cash flow all year long. That is what helps you in busy season, that, you know, all that good stuff. So if you're not getting those leads, all you need to do is fix your lead flow problem. So if go through this list today that I gave you of those three things and really do a self-evaluation, where is your brand right now? Where is your company right now? Or if you're brand new, think about, oh my gosh, how can I not, you know, fall into these pitfalls? Because the worst thing is you get in two or three years and you realize I have to do a complete rebrand because things have slowed down or things have dried up or, you know, you have to kind of go back to the drawing board. So Fourth quarter is a beautiful time to fix these things and get your right beautiful marketing plan in place before we go into Q1. Now is the time. And you know, these tips, I hope they're helpful for you guys to grow. If you're looking for something more, I really want you to consider, I'm going to invite you to apply for our Careers on Vacation mastermind. You can go to careersonvacation.com forward slash ready now, and we will help you with this stuff during fourth quarter, have everything streamlined, ready to go and in place and marketing happening, happening by November and December, right? If you're start, starting in August, September, have everything done. So you're leading into busy season with the right setup and you can have the best year you've ever had in the travel industry. So um, I'm going to invite you to do that. And no matter what, guys, I wish you guys so much love and abundance. I'm so glad to be back on the live streams. We're going, the next few weeks are going to be crazy, but I'm going to try to, to jump on every Wednesday. We, um, for those of you who don't know, a couple years ago, we have a brick and mortar in um, uh, Houston, Texas. We, my family moved to Austin and we've been building a home. And so we're moving next week. I'm so excited. We're going to have a new cruise on vacation office. It's a second story office with gorgeous views. I'm going to be doing so many cool live streams and sharing that with y'all as well. So I wish you guys so much love and abundance and uh, wherever you are in the world, I wish you the world. You guys have a great day. Take care guys.